and the crowd roars again. No, finally. But this must be such an interesting feeling for him because only four years ago, people would have been coming on the days to come and congratulate him. And this really is a passing of the baton. Absolutely. It is that if you wanted to see absolutely. the old order changes, this Ab is it. Absolutely, absolutely. And let's see what happens. Wow. Isn't it beautiful? And let's not forget that in this fourth republic, he is the only president to serve wow. one term. Only. One term only. And um, he became president after uh, the late Professor Mills passed away uh, on the 24th of July. And he was president for a few months. And then he was elected president. Unfortunately, against Nanado this time around, he was not able to. But well, I don't know that it's unfortunate. 1.2 million votes difference is well, unfortunate. it's unfortunate for the NDC. So oh, okay. that's why I'm saying it's unfortunate. But he will always be remembered for a number of things. Uh, I don't know if we can say it on Ghana television, but there are a few things that, are, that come to mind when we talk about President John Dramani Mahama. Well, apparently the crowd still finds him fascinating. Absolutely. You see and him he's still a very away. young man. So, 50s, um, who knows? I, I believe he's he going to do back. a lot of international and, work. And I tell you, Ghana is the beneficiary of this kind of political maturity. Ghana is the beneficiary of this kind of political maturity. So we have the 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 ex vice president uh, PK Parkesi Emise Arthur and his wife, uh, the former second lady, also going up to congratulate. Wow. I hope that all of the foot soldiers out there are watching this because at the end of the day, politics it really should not be a divisive factor. It seems like that in Ghana. It certainly it was a very long year, but there you have it. There you have it. The old order changer. Giving way to new. Long live the king. You know something? <laughs> I'm proud to be a Ghanaian today. I'm really proud that I'm a Ghanaian. You know what, what fascinates what me is seeing. the unity that we see between old rivals, I should say, the MPP and the NDC, yet today none of those rivalries come to play here at all. It's all about one Ghana, one people, one destiny. That's all one it is. One great destiny. Absolutely. One great destiny. And wherever we are, we must be proud as a people for what is taking place here, uh, it's a, it's right here at the Independence you know? Square. It is self-healing. So you're watching us live on Ghana television across the nation, across the globe, on DSTV 278, and also on Radio Ghana, Unique FM, and all the FM stations around the country. This uh, it has been the swearing in and inauguration of the president, uh, Nana Akufuado. And uh, he's been sworn in. Those of you who missed it, you've missed quite a lot. But very soon, he'll be going to inspect the guard of honor, and this will come to an end. But uh, as we still get the dignitaries coming up to congratulate I them. I believe that this is... I believe that we're not clear who this is. But you had mentioned about pride. And in the president's speech, of course, he talked a lot about pride. Um, so let's look at uh, uh, some of the things that uh, the president said in his speech. Um, I believe he talked about a lot of things. Uh, what excited me is his mention of the youth as the people who will drive um, this administration. He's talked about jobs. He's talked about the, the one village, one down policy. He's talked about the one district, one factory policy. He's talked about the Zongo Development Fund. He's talked about one million dollars per constituency, 275 constituencies across the nation. So quite a lot has been said. So people are expectant from this administration. And I think
think quite a lot has also been said in Ghana about governance and corruption. Absolutely. And the president addressed it directly. He said, we must restore integrity in public life. State coffers are not spoils for the party that wins an election, but resources for the country's social and economic development. Governance, 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 that's an issue that I think everybody... It's a pleasure to announce that a representative of President Sazu Ngozo has been present, but has left because of flight avenue for making money money is to be made in the private sector not the public measures will be put in place to ensure this and he's warned people already he warned people that if you want to make money don't join my government and i think that is critical to all of this. And he did also point out the, the, the way to make money. He says we, can, we must create wealth and restore happiness to our nation. We can only do this when we have an educated and skilled population that is capable of competing in the global economy. On your screen live, of course, is Mr. Kofi Annan and his wife, former Secretary General of the United Nations. Mr. Kofi Annan and his wife, Mr. and Mrs. Kofi Annan, um, go up and offer their congratulations as well. And Mr. Kofi Annan has been working tirelessly ever since he left the United Nations uh, with his foundation. And his wife uh, has been supporting him in that. And there's no doubt that he brings good wishes to the president of the republic but uh, yeah but you know what excites me in exactly 90 days from now this country turns 60 60 and the president, the, pres the president referred to In exactly to it. 60 days, I must correct myself, 60 days. The president referred to it yes. in his speech. 60 days. And he says um, in his speech, we will rekindle that spirit that made Ghana the leading light on the African continent and make our conditions deserving of that accolade. So absolutely, I think March, Ghana turned 60, and the ambition of the president is to put a change which is factored around the youth and citizens and around governance. He talked about the constitution being 24 years old, having tried and tested it for 24 years. There are clearly some areas that need reform. And that came out also in his speech. And we, you know, in the past two years or so, we've had the constitutional review committee, which was set up to try and do that. So I think it's about implementing what the committee has uh, reviewed. So quite a lot will happen in the first hundred days of, um, of well, the Well, yes, if you, if, if you, if you take a cue from his from speech, his speech a number then there are a number of things will happen when he says a true separation of power. So I wonder what he means by that. We shall find out shortly. But you were talking about pride, and it is amazing. That is Egypt, the president of Egypt, because that's the Egyptian ambassador who's just walked off the screen. Let me quickly say, uh, we want to say thank you to Zoom Lion for uh, an amazing work done. Uh, they provided the bins, they cleared the place, they painted the place, made sure it was okay. So we want to say thank you to Zoom Lion for everything that... Uh, and then the technical crew, the, the OB technicians, uh, Mr. Seta Kutia, Ebenezer Ampabing, Ben Kutenikwe, the technical managers, GTV, they've been great today, haven't they? Well, they've certainly kept us going. They've kept us on our toes. The service has been fantastic. And I think it's really good that Ghana Television was able to serve all other media who wanted a live Absolutely. feed. Absolutely. And what excited me about Ghana Television today is the drones. We have the drones in the air today. And so, so that was exciting. Uh, and there you go. Exciting. The crowd signals change, change. Well, change has already come. Change. As I, I, we, the crowd is still going. They're still excited. Um,
Well, you're watching live Ghana Television, and um, my name is J.U.T. Ajman, and I'm here with... It's very kind of you to bring us in. My name is Nana Yao Furiata, and our other commentator is Colonel Comfort Ankoma Dancer. And we're watching the crowd. Let's talk about the crowd that gathered here today. I'm told that some people came as early as 3 o'clock. We got here at 6 o'clock and it was virtually chock-a-block. You couldn't get in. Cars parked and people walking. And the amazing thing is they're walking and singing and drumming and dancing. It was like a walking carnival. There's even an elephant on wheels somewhere in the crowd. Somebody's wheeling around the elephant. The elephant, of course, being the symbol of the NPP party. So there is an elephant in the crowd, a virtual elephant as well as a real one, somewhere out there in the crowd. And there you have Dr. Ibn Chambers, the UN's envoy uh, for ECOWAS. Uh, in our screens there, uh, a proud Ghanaian diplomat, served in parliament as well, yes, at the did. same time as uh, Nana Ado was in parliament, Absolutely. so, so they, uh, they know each other very well. Indeed. So as we spoke about the crowd, I'm still looking outside towards the Freedom and Justice Arch, uh, where thousands of people are gathered. We're just about to come to the end of the program, yet nobody seems to be moving anywhere. <laughs> That's indeed, amazing, isn't it? Indeed. I'm sure some of them have not even eaten the whole day, and they are not even aware of it. Well, we haven't eaten the whole day. We've been here well, since 6 o'clock. Well. We are working. <laughs> For king and country, I think it's called service to the nation. One of the, while well, still on praise and pride, what Nanada said also, Nanada Dankwe Kufuado said in his speech was, there should be no higher praise than to be able to say, I am a Ghanaian. I like that. No higher praise. So do I. So do I. In some way, he also said that he, he is pledging to live by example. And this is not the first time he said it. Throughout his campaign, Nana Adodanko Ekufuado kept on saying that he would, he would want to live by example, which means he's a man of his word, and we should take him for it. Well, I think he will, because the expectation of the people of Ghana is actually very high, and uh, all through the campaign to the election uh, to now, everything that he has done, his demeanor has been statesmanlike. And people want to learn from some of the things that he has said uh, he's going to do. And for me, what excites me is the fact that he said that Ghana is open for business. So, obviously, with the MPP, we know it's, a, it's more of a capitalist, it's a centric right party. So, the private sector will be involved quite a lot in whatever uh, the governance of this country. And so, he also challenges Ghanaians to be participants rather than spectators. Right. He did say something like that. Yes, he did. He also said, I think, um, something about stimulating the creative juices of innovators. So opening opportunities for the youth and for new ways of making money, of building an economy away, I suppose, from the traditional cocoa gold mining, which has been the backbone of our economy, agriculture. But he's talking about innovation. So that will take things to another level, don't you think? Yes, it will. It will. I mean, and um, the fact that he talks about uh, building a united Ghana, which is at peace with itself and takes pride in its diversity. And it's interesting to note that he wants the youth to be the driving force of what we do. So he talked about rekindling the spirit that made Ghana the leading light on the African continent and, and, and to make our conditions deserving. Uh, of that accolade. So I love that. He talks about the shutters are up again, um, and that's that's quite sim sim symbolic. The shutters are up again. On the screen now is that's Hajia Ramatu uh, Mahama, the former uh, second lady and wife? and wife of the late uh, former vice president uh, Alaji Ali, Ali, Ali Mahama. The shutters are up again in Ghana. So we're still watching live telecast of the swearing in and inauguration of Nana Adodankwa Kufadu. Uh, he's been sworn in. 
about uh, an hour ago. So the ceremony still continues, and we see Hajia Ramatu Mahama still uh, exchanging greetings and congratulating uh, the dignitaries on the podium. So we are live from the Independence Square, and um, we are going to be giving you some tidbits from the speech for those. Majority Leader, at this time, may we have an indication. Are we going to see something very different from Nanado uh, in the next four years? Well, I think the people who voted for him are going to be demanding that, and he understands us. He says the Ghanaian people have summoned the change we celebrate today. They have raised their voices in an unmistakable chorus. They have cast their votes without ever without equivocation and have forced the change. He did say he's going to be working with the legislature and the judiciary and he made it very clear that there's no precedent, no parliament, no government that can undertake this change by itself. So he has in a sense put a lot of the responsibility back on the citizens of Ghana where he says the change we have voted for will have to start with each of us as individuals. We can start with little changes changes in our own individual attitudes and practices. So I think he clearly understands that we want to see something different. A different way of governing, a different way in which the economy functions, a different way in which you relate to the elderly, the youth. All of those issues are here in Ghana. We want a different approach. Because the truth is, if we don't find that, the buck stops with him. Yes, and it does. four years is not a very long time. And in case he has any doubt about that, he can speak to Mr. Mahama how quickly that flies. Absolutely. Um, as you pointed out, Mr. Mahama was given one term, one term only, and it's really important for all of the parliamentarians, the potential ministers, and everyone who comes into government, first of all, to realize that we do not want business as usual. The minority and majority leaders of parliament were, in our, were on the screen. They are getting a short ready while to ago. now come and congratulate. Uh, the President of the Republic. So the Majority Leader, Honorable Chairman Sabonsu, uh, the MP4 Swami, uh, and also the Minority Leader, Honorable Haruna uh, Idrisu, will, I think and they will export. Sefukai walking away. He's done a yeoman's job down there whilst we've been sitting up here as well. So this ceremony, um, the swearing in and inauguration of the fifth president of the fourth republic of Ghana will be coming to an end mm, shortly. Um, I think we're coming to um, the majority and minority leaders and then we will be moving on of course and this is where Colonel you'll be taking over. This will be your show now, the Guard of Honor and you can explain to us when it starts what exactly the president is seeing and doing from your perspective as a as a military person. We have wish to God that they will be able to deliver and carry this nation to a higher pedestal. Mr. Speaker, the sitting of this house began in the early hours of this day at exactly five minutes after 12 midnight. We've traveled a long way. Certainly, bones are tired and squeaky. <laughs> and the time really is at one o'clock after noon. May I move that this house adjourns proceedings until Tuesday next week at 10 o'clock in the forenoon. I so move. Honorable Minority Leader. Right, Honorable Speaker. On behalf of the Minority Caucus and my own personal behalf, 
Let me convey hearty congratulations to the President of the Republic, Nana Dudangba Kufuado, Vice President of the Republic, Dr. Mahmoud Baumia, and Mr. Speaker, to your good self. I beg to second the motion for the adjournment, serving notice that next time, on or before one minute or five minutes after 12 o'clock, we will insist that the process continues for the swearing in of whoever is the present in, the, in order to avoid a constitutional vacuum. I beg to second the motion. <laughs> Honorable members, the motion has been moved and seconded. And the question is, as many as are in favor of adjournment, say aye. As many as are against, say no. The ayes have it. The motion is adopted. The House is accordingly adjourned till Tuesday, the 10th day of January 2017 at 10 o'clock in the forum. Thank you, honorable members. Hello, hello, hello. Ladies and gentlemen, shall we rise for the national anthem? Hello, hello. and I have been humbled um, to have been supported today by Abna Madamaje, who's been running back and forth, giving us information, <laughs> Colonel Comfort, <laughs> and Danso, and of course, Jerity. Thank you. The technical managers, as well as Zoom Lion for a human's job, uh, it's not over because the president is now going to inspect the, the guard of honor and um, we will bring you the guard of honor as well after which the president will leave uh, the independence square. But from us here, your team here at the independence square, we want to say thank you very, very much for having us in your homes on television and on radio. So stay tuned. We are not off. Uh, it's time for the Guard of Honor, hey! and GTV continues hey! to bring you that uh, hey! uh, as well, and Kennel uh, Danso will bring you that. Thank you very much. And the Vice President, accompanied by the Chief of the Defense Staff, Air Marshal Michael Sampson Oje, and the Inspector General of Police, Mr. John Kudalo, make their exit from the Chamber of Parliament, where we have witnessed today the inauguration of the fifth president of the Fourth Republic of Ghana. Outside, the President of the Republic will inspect a guard of honor mounted by the Ghana Armed Forces.
the God of honor mounted by the and men of the Ghana Armed Forces to be inspected by the President of the Republic of Ghana, His Excellency Nana Ado Dankwa Ekufuado. The bearer of the Mace of Parliament, led by officials of Parliament, the Minority Leader and the Majority Leader, and the Right Honourable Speaker of the Parliament of the Republic of Ghana, yeah, as well as Her Ladyship the Chief Justice, yeah. Sing. followed by His Excellency the Vice President of the Republic of Ghana, Al Haj Dr. Muhammad Dubaumia. Also followed by His Excellency the President of the Republic of Ghana, Nana Adodankwa Ekufuado, flanked by the IGP yeah, and Governor. the Chief of the Defense Staff. So, hey, Dankwa Ekufuado is inspecting the guard of honor which has been mounted for him as president and the commander in chief of the Ghana Armed Good Forces. Up to your excellency. Inauguration ceremony guard the of guard honor which have been formed up guard mounted by the Ghana Army consists of three officers 96 rank and file with the Ghana Armed Forces Central Band Ready for your inspection, Major Eric Abiti, reporting, Your Excellency.
Your Excellency, please bow to the flag. Excellency, we inspect the back row now. His Excellency, the Commander-in-Chief of the Ghana Armed Forces, his ADC, is Kendall Bismarck Kwesi Ongona. It's an infantry officer from 48th Engineer Regiment. He has read all his necessary military courses and currently holds a master's degree of art in international affairs from Leicester University of Ghana, Legon. Can I be speaks fluent French and German. Excellency, please you mount the base for the second national salute. By mounting the guard of honor to the president, the Ghana Armed Forces affirms its loyalty and respect to the President of the Republic. Viewers, in your shot is the new President of the Republic of Ghana, the seventh since the Republic. And there he's been welcomed by very hearty and happy people. There is the parade commander. The inspection is over. And your is reporting Excellency. to the commander in chief. Inspection over. May I have your permission to carry on, Your Excellency? Permission is granted. And so. And so the parade commander, Major Eric Abiti, retreats to the parade and marches all the colors and the rest of the parade. Currently in your shot. It's a guard of runner. National salute. Re in the new president of the Republic of Ghana in the person of His Excellency Nana Adodankwa Akufo Ado. Thank you very much for having us. 
and may God bless Ghana. And God bless the Republic. Thank you.